Hello, uh, this is the 29th episode of the GR Cage Twitchcast. Today we have Victor Mildo. Hello, hello. We also have Genuel. Hello. And we have the wonderful, and I believe this is your first time here, we have Corazon. I think it's Corazon de Leon? Uh, your guess is as good as mine, I don't speak Spanish. Hello. <laughs> we'll just call you Cora. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it is your first time here, isn't it? On this, anyway. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought it might be fun to start with you then. <laughs> okay. No pressure. No, yeah. th there's no pressure. To be honest, the only time I've ever actually asked more personal questions with, was with Doom when it was just me and him one week. And I was like, right, let's, let's just do like some kind of interview where I'm just asking you questions. I haven't done it since. I should do it with everyone really who's taken part. At oh, some point. <laughs> oh, it's nothing personal. I did the very first question is, how big is your penis? <laughs> but then I am like, you know, jokingly, and we moved on from there. Just quite, the, quite, just the quite I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I was thinking, uh, it's, it's, I haven't done one for a while. And so I thought, if we just have a bit of a catch up, maybe talk about a bit of news in a little bit, or would you rather talk about news now and then talk about what you played after? I'm probably as well. Ask while you're on you. Uh, Was it? I'm not very easy. Well, we'll start with what you've been playing, if you if you don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I have been playing a lot of really bad Xbox 360 games um, because I haven't done a lot of gaming for many many years, and I've suddenly found myself with more free time than I know what to do with. So I'm going through maybe six or seven years worth of backlog. Um, I'm currently on Resident Evil Six. That's that's the one I'm on at the moment. Would you consider well. to be? Would you consider that to that to be a good game? A right, okay. Would you consider it to be a good Resident Evil game? A good game? A bad game? Or a bad Resident Evil game? It's oh, it's difficult. Um, it's 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 not a bad game. It's it's a good third person action shooting game. It, it, there's no doubt about that. It plays well. It's fun. You know, it's, it's got a lot of content. I don't know if it's a Resident Evil game. Um, I don't know if it quite ticks the boxes for me. It's, it's kind of... Four was excellent. Five was kind of not quite the same as the previous few games. And six is kind of following on that trend. But do you think four enough, of, I'm enjoying it. Do you think four was the turning point, though? It was where it was more action-orientated? I think so. I think that's the point that it becomes, it kind of flicks from being sort of horror with a bit of action to action with a bit of horror. Um, and by the time you get to this, this one is kind of almost like the films um, in the sense that there are zombies and monsters and it's like, whoa, but you know, you, you've usually got the firepower to deal with them and it's, it's not like you're not scared at any point like you were when a dog came crashing through the window mm. and I spent all night behind my bed. Um, and like after playing the first one for 20 minutes how much have you played of it? Uh, I've done two of the four campaigns um, I'd played one of them years and years ago so I don't really remember so about halfway two thirds maybe right uh, have you done Leon's chapter or any of Leon's chapter? yes uh, Leon's is the closest I think to, to kind of classic Resident Evil but even then it's kind of it's more like Leon Resi 4 than Leon Resi yeah. 2 yeah I, I remember playing, I played it a couple of years back, I played through it twice, but I played it a couple of years back, and I was, I actually was playing Leon's chapter. And for the first chapter and a half, I was like, actually, this is a lot better than I remembered, and then after that, then it just really goes downhill. <laughs> it, yeah, there's definitely, the first chapter was really good, um, and then after that, it was kind of, I think you're right, it was kind of, it becomes a little bit samey, a little bit action-y, and not, just not quite at the same level as, as, as the rest of the series is. But the problem Resi 6 has is that it's preceded by so many iconic games that it's, it's it needs to be really special to match up to that. It's, it's always going to be difficult. Mm. Especially when you're like me and you've played through Resident Evil 2 like 40 times. Any game coming into the series now is going to have a lot of difficulty matching up purely to the nostalgia. Um, let alone the actual gameplay of, of, of the, the earlier games in the series. No, I can, I can understand where you're coming from there. 
the, the problem for me with sixes is, is is it does go down the uh, action route way too much. I also just didn't. I I don't know. It, but like the older Resident Evil games, they all they also had like this epic cheesiness that I found six didn't have, and I think that takes away from her as well. Oh, I don't know. The the, the cheesiness is alive and well. I see. Um, I don't find it cheesy. I just find it daft. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more like it's more like Die Hard Four cheesy than sort of B movie horror cheesy though. You mm. got like two guys in a fight of plane jumping up and down on the like on top of the fight of plane, shooting missiles down, um, you know, jumping in and out of it as if it's a car. It's it's a lot of fun and daft and, and cheesy, but it, I think you're right. It's not the it's not the same kind of of cheesy as like here take this lockpick. <laughs> kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Any of you guys uh, played uh, Resident Evil 6? No, I've, um, I've only played the first one on the original PlayStation, and that dog moment, I think anybody who played that when it came out, they'll never forget that. Me and oh, my mate wrapped oh. ourselves playing. I could even picture his room. He had a little um, TV. He's one of, he was quite cool. He was cool to me because he had his TV on a, on a wall mount, which was unheard of back then for us. And to get it tucked right up in the corner, and we were playing that, and we crapped ourselves and turned it off. I played Resident Evil 2, uh, I never finished it. I started Resident 4, and never finished it. And I recently, relatively recently, played the remake that was free on PlayStation Plus. But I haven't played any of the other ones. Okay. So... How come you never really finished the games? Is it that you're not very good with horror games, or you just didn't enjoy the games, or you it's big baby? Baby, that's, that's not true. I had um, Code Veronica. I never finished that, but I, I got completely stuck near the end. You know, when you get yourself into a situation where you've saved and you've not got any ammo or anything, and it's just like mm. I really yeah, I hadn't saved. I've I had that happen to me in Dead Space, though not in Resident Evil. <laughs> I get to a point, I, I really enjoy them, but I tend to, I wasn't that good at them when I was first playing them. I was really poor at um, managing my resources. So I just kind of use everything up on some easy enemies, save it because it was the end of the night, and then I'd really stitch myself up and wouldn't hmm. be able to progress any further. Or I'd borrowed it off someone and I had it for so long that they just asked for it back or something. Nah. <laughs> That's the problem with uh, lending games out. Sometimes people want them back. <laughs> selfish. I know, it is selfish. How dare How they? Dare they? How feel your enjoyment. It's not. <laughs> they should have it back when I'm goddamn willing to give it back. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if I'm somebody, somebody asked to borrow a game off you, say somebody asked to borrow Resident Evil on the PlayStation. Never, It's been in the loft for six years. Of course you can borrow it. Second they've got it, you want to play yeah, I think yeah. that's that is the problem. It's like you've you've got loads of games, um, and uh, like, not loads because you've got several games and you're like enjoying them all. You haven't touched this one for months. Someone says, "Can I borrow?" You're like, "Yeah, you go have a you can have a land, have it for a while, no rush." You're sitting there and looking at your games, going, "Oh, we're playing these. I wish I hadn't let my game out now." <laughs> I think so the cool. act of the act of giving the game to the person, like as soon as you see it, you think, "Oh God, what am I doing?" And then when it's gone, you just think, right, I need to play that now. Hurry, hurry up, hurry up and finish it. <laughs> Mario Kart uh, Deluxe, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. My mate of mine I work with, he um he got a Switch. He's like, oh, can I borrow it? Because I want to see if my, my daughter will be able to play it. She's quite young. I was like, of course she can. You know, I hadn't had it that long myself. Like, of course she can, no problem. You can have it for this weekend. And then Monday came and he hadn't played it. He's like, oh, can I hold on to it for the weekend? But, uh, yeah, yeah, of course you can. And then that weekend came, and he hadn't played it again. So I'm like, give it back, give it back. I'm really, uh... <laughs> give it back. I had to play online that. with a bunch of nerds. Give it back. Yeah. But it, <laughs> Actually, have you joined us Mondays? So I don't sliding know. Sliding into pit, somebody keeping it forever. Oh, I'll play it yeah. next weekend. I'll play it next weekend, and then it's four years later, and you're like, no, it's gone. I'm never getting it back. Oh, it's. Can I have my game back? Uh, uh, I. I think I'm my mother threw it in the bin. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, the dog ate it. It's like really. One of my one of my mates' dogs did genuinely eat my um my coffee of Micro Machines Two on the Mega Drive. <gasps> oh god! I was 
Ab- he had a little Jack Russell called Toby, and it was the little shit of a dog. It was a, <laughs> it was a horrible, horrible dog. And I'm really, really particular about keeping my stuff immaculate. I always have been. And we <laughs> went to Florida for holiday, two weeks. I came back, and he borrowed it for two weeks. I came back, and he handed me the case back, and it was just like... <laughs> it through a shredder or something. And, and was, the worst thing is he was laughing when he hand, held it back. I was like, paying for that? No, I'm not. <laughs> You're paying for that. Yeah, I, I don't believe you. No, that I think is only fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, so did the dog, I was going to say, did the dog eat the cartridge or like no, just, luckily, just, the, just the case? Hey. Luckily, it was so so robust with the Mega Drive cases that it didn't manage to actually get through, but it absolutely destroyed the outside of it. I mean, it looked oh, like somebody taking an ice with... to it. All the artwork was ripped, all the, yeah. the outer bit was shredded. That's the thing, if it was a Nintendo case, okay, so I would have gone and the cart would have been, well, the cart probably would have brought the dog's teeth, you know, Nintendium. And all <laughs> <I know. laughs> have you played uh, Resident Evil 6, Ginny Well, I don't think we asked you yourself. No, I've not. So I've, it's, it's a series that I've kind of abandoned. Um, so I played all of them on the PS1. Mm-hmm. Um, then Code Veronica on the Dreamcast. I love that. That was great. Um, and then... I did get Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, I think, mm-hmm. but I never, never really. Oh, anyway, at the time, everyone was like, "Oh, this is amazing! It's the you know the the you know rejuvenation of the franchise that it needed." And I was like, "No, it's not. I don't like it as much as the old ones." So I kind of gave up after Resi 4. Um, uh, have you I played the, going I think... back with Seven and uh, Two Remake and Cold, uh, not Cold Rodriguez, uh Three Remake? Yeah, I know. I've thought about it, but it's well, it's it's a classic case of just too much, too much stuff to play now. Mm. Um, I would definitely, yeah, I, um, I would definitely recommend the, the, the remake of two. Um, it's like if you can at some point, it's really, really strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two, two was always my favourite of the series, yeah. so it's it's kind of it's on my you know my PS4 wish list, and actually, I think I've got it. Yeah, I've got multiple lists that I keep of games I want. I've got a I've got a PC and a PS4 and I'm like, well I could get it on either of those and it keeps coming up in sales and I think, oh but I've got five games on the go or whatever. So Yeah. <laughs> My favourite, if you're gonna talk favourite Resident Evils, was the remake of one on the GameCube. It was by it's it's just oh, fucking amazing. Great, yeah. It's it's like Resident oh, Evil so One was obviously like set in the present for the, the games and you know, it was great. But the remake just took everything that they'd ha- done before. Yeah. And like just made the first game ten times better and just so much fun. Uh, and yeah. what's, uh, what's her name? Lisa something? In oh, the, Lisa Trevor. Oh, the, the extra, yeah. Yeah, that stuff was fucking and, weird. I don't, I don't think she dies, does she? just, like, fucks <laughs> off and, like, leaves you alone. She just falls down a hole. Um, yeah, and you see more yeah, of Barry. And, some stones <laughs> about and she grabs a skull and jumps, out, jumps yeah, off, a, yeah. off a cliff, essentially. Yeah, um, uh, so you see more of her. still down there. More, like I said, more of Barry's in the game. Can't complain about Barry. Barry's great. I love Barry. <laughs> I was told about uh, Re- uh, Revelations Two, I think, where Barry, uh, ba- like Barry's daughters in it or something, or yeah. And she and she references it to Jill, and Jill's like, "Oh, your father told you about that kind of thing, the whole Jill sandwich yeah. thing." <laughs> it's a nice little callback, actually. It's, yeah. it's, just, it's just like a kind of <laughs> reference to how cheesy the game used to be. I miss those um, days. <laughs> oh, it's great. There's a really strong um there's a really strong Resident Evil speedrunning community on Twitch as well. Um if you've ever got a spare hour you can go and watch someone rattle through one of the games. Yeah, I, there's someone I can't remember his name, it's like Kara sort of Don S D or something. And he he speedruns a lot of Resident Evil games. I, I'm not sure of his name exactly, but I think he's recently been speedrunning two, uh the remake. Yeah. Oh, I'm nice. awful with names, so you know. <laughs> a friend think... of mine, a friend of mine started it up recently, um, and he's he's really good at it. He can already do Nemesis in under an hour. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, um, it's it's really interesting to see some of the tricks that they do and, and stuff like that. Completely ruins the atmosphere of the games and everything, but it's it's fun um, if you're sort of nerdy about the series like me. Um. What else has everyone been playing? I was going to ask Victor. The reason why is because he usually leaves to go have a poo at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them. 
<laughs> Sorry, he goes to walk his dog so the dog can go for a poo. All right, he just likes to go to the toilet. He's set in his ways, how Victor is. Quote work. <laughs> to my, my, my routine. <laughs> so, have you been playing anything I, recently? I think you've been playing some racing stuff, um, no? No one knew? Yeah, I've been playing um, Assetto Corsa Competizio and Ace. I've got to do it with an Italian hand gesture when you say that. Which, if you've not if you've not seen or heard of it, it's a it's a proper sim. It's PC based, but it's coming to console very soon, actually. Um, but it simulates the blank pan GT3 series. So rather than being a jack of all trades like a lot of racing games are now, like Project Cars seems to want to have every single racing discipline going to the point where it just ends up having no focus. This is only the GT3 series which I don't really know much about, to be honest. And it's got a couple of years of that. It's absolutely fantastic. And the key thing being that it's actually got proper AI in it, as in very, very good racing AI that you can race against rather than just trick like you can. You trying to say Mario Kart haven't got good AI? Oh, dear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there. But yeah, I've been playing a bit of that, so that's great fun. But I, um, I bought Xenoblade Chronicles... I was definitive edition. It's called. One thing it? about that racing game first before you move on. Uh, I know you are a big fan of VR. Does it have VR? Yes, I've been playing the hell out of it. It brings my system to its knees, though. Um, ah. I was playing it as I tend to do with a lot of my racing stuff. I tend to just time trial, treat it like a track day almost, pick a car and track and just spend all evening trying to better my time and stuff. It's oddly relaxing. Um, this one, I thought. I played it so long. I thought, well, let's give the let's give the actual racing a go. And see what it's like, my God, my system just fell over doing it. It was moving up to like ten. Are you seconds. able to select a delivery bike? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. Uh, so you said what's head plate? Sorry. <laughs> it's an in joke. You know, it's an in joke. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Was, it, was it 10 weeks now without this kind of abuse? <laughs> yeah. You'd be missing it. In between, in between that Lancaster bomber bloke coughing in my ear, I've, I've been oddly relaxed. But yeah, thanks, thanks for bringing that back. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. Um, do you know what told me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Peer pressure. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I've been playing Zender, but I had it. I got it originally on the Wii. You might have seen me say in the um, GRP thread about it. I'd always heard it was really good on the Wii. And I only really picked it up because it was rare as rocking horse shit. And Argos had, for some reason, quite a long time after it had gone out of print, they had a little, must have been like a pallet of them somewhere, just turn up and it went on sale for a couple of hours. Oh, nice. I managed to get one and um, played it. But it was one of those things where, you know, when you start a game and you don't really fancy it, and you really shouldn't have started it. Mm. You kind of got one eye on it, really. And I got a, maybe sort of 20 hours into it, I'd say, on and off. And I sort of dropped it and never went back. But I really remember what I did play of it being really good. So I just thought, when that came out, I was like, Do you know what? I'm going to pick that up. And I didn't actually realise it was not a, re it's not a remake, is it? But it's quite... In you know, it's a very impressive quite... remaster, I'd say. Yeah, it's, um, it's been properly redone. You know, it's not a yeah. A lazy mm. job. It's, it's like, not like it's not like spiral levels and yeah, uh, it really, really but it is, it is much better. Very good. I just wasn't expecting it at all. I was like, Jesus, this looks good. And then, like the quality of life improvements, like, oh my god, there's actual indications of stuff you should be picking up or things you should be fighting, and you can actually track your quests now. And yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, I, I've recently started playing that as well. I got it. It came a day late for me. I started it Saturday, and I only played it for about three hours, something like that. Uh, I've literally just, just now, I'm, I'm now on my way to explore the world, so to speak. And yeah, the, the visuals on it are a massive a step from what they were. Um, it's also got, oh, it's I think, like, like remixed music, not remixed, but like rearranged music and stuff like that as well. Yeah, it's, um, I didn't really notice until I got to, I've, I'm, I'm about seven and a half hours in, I'll be doing loads of side quests. Just got to, um, is it Guar Plain? I don't know how you pronounce it. 
Yeah, the, the classic. Planes, I think? I'm not sure. That's, that's the one, yeah. Just got there, and um, the music's ever so slightly different to how I remember it. Because I had the soundtrack on my phone for ages. I used to listen to it quite a lot. Yeah, one thing one thing is with Xenoblade, or Xenoblade, as some people say, I say Xenoblade, I think it's because I'm, I'm British, um, uh, is, like, even if you don't really like the game, the music in it is... So amazing, good, amazing. It? It's just amazing. Have you played Chronicles X on the Wii U? I haven't. I've got it. I think oh, I might even have like, two copies of it. That it. Game, you, you've got to play it's, it. First off, it's amazing anyway. It's such a good game and the sense of scale is just ridiculous. It's absolutely beautiful, but the music is phenomenal in it. There's one area, it's like a, almost like a sort of fantasy jungle. And the music's just like I, I remember. I just sit there and put the pad down and listen to it. It's so good. Um, with with Xenoblade Chronicles, like I played a bit of two. I haven't played X, and I played Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii. I didn't finish it because I'm an awful, awful person and really long. The problem with me is if a game's really long and I'm really enjoying it, if a new game comes out, I'm like a like a child. I want a new toy, <laughs> so I play a new game and start on that. And I got I, I, to. Like the Bionis is not the Bionis shoulder, because that I think is actually new to this That's game. It's a new area, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's like cut content, I believe. It's like a snowy area just after prison, I, the prison island section, and it's just man. <laughs> I can't wait to see. like some of these areas were like really like even f like they were quite ropey for because they were wee visuals then, like. I, I'm thinking oh, really small. No, they weren't. They weren't really small. <laughs> they weren't. Really, <laughs> God damn it! They weren't really Sorry. small areas. No, they were quite big. The large areas. I, I'm still amazed that they managed to get that out of a Wii. But um, like, obviously, they weren't the great. They weren't HD. They weren't like really amazing assets and what have you. So I'm, I'm like thinking about the areas I've been to and what they're going to look like on the Switch version. Cause they're gonna be a like it's gonna be much nicer to look at like you know it really does i mean you've got to think as well that it is basically a handheld this thing this is a handheld looking like this absolutely it's, it's so good and also i'm glad all the um stupid voices and stuff are still in because my wife stupid voices how dare you <laughs> When we, when we were playing the Wii one, she was just laughing all the time. She was like, what the, why do they keep saying that? So as soon as I started playing this, it's like, let's not lose our heads, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ryan time. <laughs> now it's Ryan time. No? Anyone? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Oh, the cut, the cut scenes where it's just so, it's so wow, what are you going to do, Shog? I don't know. We should probably go, though, soon. <laughs> like, that ridiculous deadpan voices for these awful things happening. Yeah, I like the um the commander uh in the, like at the beginning of the game when his arms yeah. flailing and he's like screaming and he just down. punches the other soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Smacks him under I've got to load those batteries. <laughs> uh that's within the first hour of the game, if not earlier. <laughs> Good. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's such it's such a great game, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm surprised they managed to get out of the Wii. Um, have you played? Have, have you? Have, has everyone played Xenoblade at all? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Um, so I my only. Oh, sorry. No, no, carry on, carry on. Uh, my only experience of Xenoblade is um, through Banjo and Foramite um, thrashing me with Shulk on Smash Brothers. So. Uh -huh. Uh, I've taken a kind of natural hump towards Xenoblade as a result of that <laughs> um, and I haven't played it what a but, yeah, yeah, so, like, if, if like, as a complete newcomer to the game what, why should I why should I buy this what, why is this like as a... something that I should put on my list well for me personally I would say that like the story is actually quite interesting yeah it starts off quite anime but uh, as it progresses there's actually quite a few twists and turns in the story which is quite Interesting to say the least. Uh, the gameplay is solid. The music is fantastic. The overworld is sexy. The only issue with the overworld is, it's like, hey, let's walk over here. Ah, run! There's a level nine hundred creature chasing me. <laughs> I'm level three. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, the, the, yeah. this, this, I, I don't know. There's something about the game like that really endeared me to it. I, I don't know if it was like the cheesy as fuck voice acting, like. 
you know, oh, right. it's, it's like a British, it's a British cast, same as in Xenoblade 2. Like the main character oh, in 2 is Rex and he's yeah. Scottish. Um, I've seen that, I've um, seen that. He's not Scottish. He is? He's like, no, he's like Northern England. Who? Rex? Yeah. In the second game? Yeah. Is he? Yeah, he's got a northern accent. Oh, there, are, there are Scottish people in it, but not, not Rex. Oh, maybe I'm wrong then. I thought he was <laughs> Scottish. It's been a while. I know Nier is Welsh, and that's... Yeah, Nier is Welsh. There's a, this, it's got lots of Australian people in the second one. Yeah. The main, the main like conflict in the second one is basically Scotland versus Australia. No, that's bad. That, like, my wife's Australian, so that... that, that <laughs> You're going to have to play that then. And, uh... Really inflammatory. Yeah. <laughs> I just looked up the voice actor and he's from Bolton. So, um, nah. yeah, Scotland, not so good. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it's definitely... I, I like... There's something about the... Like I said, that just endeared me to it. There's the voice acting, there's the scale of the game. And I think what made it more impressive at the time of playing it was that it was on the Wii... So that kind yeah. of helped to to it's be like, wow, this is wow. But it's incredible that that was on the Wii, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it looked a bit rougher, but it's largely the same, just tarted up now. I mean, yeah. That's just the and the really thing is, is the, the world was quite yeah. nice on the Wii as well. It was just the faces which weren't great on the Wii. Yeah, Wii. Um, what else did I like about it? I like the combat system and the music when you get into a combat with like a boss or um. Or like an elite or names enemy, right. fucking awesome man. It's something. It's, it's definitely something I'm, I'm interested in. I think I need to. I need to expand my Switch library a little bit. So I've got four, four games, games currently. Well, else, um, um, so I really I'll make sure I pick it up. I don't think it's get brought up, and um, I've not played that much with Head. So um, just in case you're going to say anything that might spoil some of the latest stuff, but the the whole world. Um, it says this in the intro, the whole world was um, two giant, well I think they're robots like two giant, like a goodie and a baddie robot fighting, they fought forever and eventually they fought so much that they got knackered and both died mid-fight and the world is on the robot so this, I mean the scale of it is like the size of a planet so you yeah, know, with the different areas, you, like, you start off in this little colony which is in like its kneecap and then you kind of as you get to different areas you can look up and see this towering great sword stuck across and you can yeah. see it it's, it's, it's the, the sense of scale yeah, is incredible it, it literally starts off showing right it line. literally starts off with them fighting it's like the bionis and the mechonis or something on them and like the enemies are the mechon from the mechonis and right and the bionis is i guess it's like biological versus machinery i guess but you know, bio, because of the Bionis yeah. and the Mechonis, but I, I don't really, like, I haven't finished the game. I, I think I was about a third, maybe halfway through. I put in about right. 40, 50 hours, I think, so. <laughs> Thematically, it sounds absolutely incredible. It sounds like it's got a really strong story and kind of, like, world attached to it, so that's good. It, it does start off slow, though. It does start off slow, especially if you're doing, like, yeah. some of the side quests and stuff. But I think once you, you I think you're in Colony 9, um, I don't know how many colonies there are, but I think once you leave that area, that's when it opens up, and then that's when you can explore. And there's so many like things you do, people you meet. Right. You know? Yes. Yeah. So, um, the col colony nine, your starting area, and it's it's a really good starting area because it's in. It's, you know, you can't see these robots. Yeah. You know, it's been explained to you at the start, but you can't actually see them from within this area. It's like a huge basin with a. Um, like a huge lake and there's beach areas and stuff. It's a very self-contained, almost like tutorial area. So it teaches you that there's enemies in these places that while well, you can go there, you don't want to go near them because they'll completely wreck you and there's little side quests and stuff. Maybe about, if you're taking your time, a good three hours in this area. It's a really nice introduction. And then when yeah, you sort yeah. of, your characters decide to then move on to the next colony, that's when you get the reveal of like, your place on these things and how big this world actually is it's like jesus christ yeah yeah the game starts it literally starts a year before where you play the game properly it's like a little cutscene, a little bit of combat as a, di as a different set of characters and then you start the game proper then as shulk and whoever else which is yeah you know which is an yeah. interesting way of starting a game i guess yeah it, it gets to say, just so... introduced combat really 
because that's that's pretty much all I've done so far. Because I yeah, I picked it up just the other day and I've only played about the first hour. Um, so yeah, I've just done yeah the opening sort of one year in the past bit, which is kind of just a very brief setting the scene and then a bit of a combat tutorial. Yeah, and then it's yeah it throws you forwards to Shulk or whatever his name is. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it because I loved I loved two. So I played two before. I've not played X, and this is the first <laughs> first experience of playing the first game. Um, I, but yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure I was told that after you complete the game, if you replay it, there's additional cutscenes throughout the game, including the start as a longer cutscene as well, like cutscenes right. as well, like in our initial battle and stuff. I don't know if that's true, but you know, I was told that. Well, there you go. <laughs> I play it through twice now and there's no new cutscenes, I'm blaming you. <laughs> I'll just say it was, yeah, third, it was, it was on the third playthrough. <laughs> have, have, uh, have you been up to much Engine World, gaming-wise? Uh, so, I've been playing a lot of um, Doom, old-school Doom uh, at the moment, um, which is kind of on sort of constant rotation for me. I just I love classic Doom. Um, it's so easy to go back to, isn't it? That's it, yeah, yeah. So, either just playing the kind of original sets of levels, or playing kind of fan megawads as they're called. So, yeah, it's like twenty-five years worth of community content for it. So, you can pretty much never get bored of it. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I've been playing quite a lot of that, which is always fun. Um, then, what else have I been doing? A lot of my time's been taken up with uh, Mario Maker. Um, that's surprising. Doing the the uh, the forum are you a master Mario Maker competition, um, which has been fun um, and it's kind of got me back into the game, which is good. But it's just that yeah, the, it's interesting how the dynamic changes when rather than just you know making levels for fun, you're it's not obviously you know the World Cup of Mario Maker, but it, yeah, there's still that little element of competition to it, and suddenly you know the pressure's on. Um, and there's some quite quite impressive uh, makers on the forum, so it's kind of hard to sort of try and stay stay up at the same level. So that that's been consuming a lot of my time. Um, I was actually thinking just just before starting this now that I've I've not I've not made any effort on my uh, my course for for this week of the competition, yeah. and I probably should be spending some time doing that. Um, I was um, looking, I was watching the actual stream, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Devlin runs the competition and I believe Devlin streams it on a Sunday at 9. And I was watching Sunday um, and you were saying you had less time to put into the, um, into it this week or last yes. week then. And you felt that it was the worst level you had previously created. That you've that, that was that you've recently cre you've created for the competition then. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I, I, it's because the, the like deadline is it's, it's kind of every two weeks we, we need you know make make a new level and then the the sort of the week, week after out. you've made one you you play everyone else's awesome. and, and rate them. Um, and so on a so Sunday night you've got to get your level in and kind of yeah last last time I just had no time during the week, um, and the weekends kind of got you know i've got three kids so i'm spending most of my time trying to stop them from killing each other um <laughs> so i got to sort of saturday night thinking i'm probably not going to get any chance sunday during the day i've not made anything yet so i kind of just bashed it all out on on saturday night and it's, it's kind of those one of those where looking back at it it's like yeah, yeah it's not it's not my best but i was quite impressed that in in a sort of hour or two on saturday night i put something together <laughs> It's, yeah, but it's, it's it's definitely fun, and and yeah, Devlin's good at coming up with uh, sort of different every every week. You get given a different sort of theme or a set of restrictions that you've got to base your level around. Um, and so yeah, like last the last set was uh, auto auto scrolling levels. Um, so yeah, there was all sorts of interesting ideas that people came up with to make that a sort of fun new challenge. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun that. Um, like I say, I because I. I love the idea of Mario Maker. I didn't get a, um, you know, like like most people in the world of gaming, I didn't buy a Wii U. Um, 
which uh, is to you know I, I i like the look of things like mario maker but there was never enough stuff on the wii u to make me think oh i need to buy one um and so when it came out on you know the switch i was like brilliant i'll, I'll you know i'll grab that I'll, I'll i like making my own levels and things um played it you know for about a month on and off and then kind of that was it so the competition was a nice way of actually getting back into the game and remembering that oh this is a lot of fun um so yeah i've been doing a lot of that really so you you said you didn't get a wii u so that would mean then that you hadn't played super mario maker at all or nope so this this game it when it came out last year on the on the switch was my first uh, introduction to it all ah, right because obviously you can't look at i was you, as you've not played both, I was wondering what you think of like some of the changes they've made, but obviously. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about Mario Maker in general, then? I think the, one of the things that surprises me about it, especially coming into the second one, um, is still some of the limitations on it. Because um, like the first week of the competition that we're doing, um, the challenge was, right, well, make a traditional Mario level. Um, and it's kind of like, well, pick either, you know, the, the Mario Brothers 1 theme or the Mario Brothers 3 or Mario World, I think, were the options. Um, I thought, all right, I'll go, you know, back to the start and I'll make a Mario Brothers 1 style level. And then you kind of think back to kind of the, some of the um, challenges and, and uh, mechanics that were in that. And it's, it's surprising how many things you still can't do in Mario Maker. So yeah, you know, there's things like the lifts uh, in the first Mario Brothers, where kind of it's like the, the two lifts are connected. So when you stand on one, the other one goes up, and things like. That. And you you can't do that in, in Mario Maker. There's the, there is no tool that lets you do that. Um, and just various things about you um, you can't have you, to to move between two areas. You have to go um, through a pipe or through a door. Whereas you think even in Mario Brothers one, there were just vines that took you up into the clouds into a new area it's, it's i was just surprised at how even simple things from the very first mario game you still can't actually do in mario maker but then at, on the the kind of counter side to that there's you know obviously tons of things that you could never do in the original mario games that you can do in mario maker and um, so there, there's it's not like there's a shortage of options but it's just surprising some of the things that aren't there um but yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun um it's fun. I, I think one of the things I hadn't realised is just how enjoyable sort of speed running kind of other people's levels. Um, it's yeah, p particularly when they're sort of designed around that. But yeah, it's just it, it's fun to make your own levels. It's fun to play other people's levels. And the uh, I was quite surprised by how good the um, like Nintendo's own content in there there was. It was like a hundred odd kind of original nintendo levels to play through oh, in the really? sort of single player but yeah um which i don't i don't know again i didn't play the first one but i don't think the first one had as much base content to it um no i think super mario maker didn't have as much stuff to it in in a sense but it had like some unique features to it like um like the mystery mushrooms yeah and, and things like that but like a lot of the stuff that's in two were added as DLC in the first game and and things like that. So like mm. quite a bit uh, has been added, but like over over the court, like there's a lot more in two than it was in one, but a lot of a, a kind of like a lot of stuff was added to one in uh, like a month, not a monthly but regular updates, like yeah. the clown cart uh, with the fire and mechanic and the weird spongy donuts and stuff like that yes. uh, bouncing donuts even not spongy <laughs> so yes yeah. um but i remember um watching the last are you a master mario maker and thinking how amazing some levels have been and i'm thinking the same thing again uh, is there any? Do you like just try your own things while you're making? In the sense of you just try something if it doesn't work, redo it, or have you watched people's like any streams where people have been making levels and thought that's a good idea? I could throw my own unique spin on it, or is it just on the fly? See how it goes. That's a good idea. I could steal that. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. 
Um, <laughs> and then I suppose I mean, steal did... something, but you could you could you uh, get inspired yeah. by something to do your own. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying the plagiarize only... people's levels. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that at all. Um, the the only thing I, re- I really did was went back and uh, on the obviously the G Arcade uh, Twitch channel. There is a yeah, we saved off a bunch of the old uh, previous versions of the competition there's you yeah there's a lot on, there's Devil a lot on the youtube there. channel yeah there's a yes, lot more yeah there. yeah um so i went back and watched some of the old stuff kind of got intimidated by a lot of it and thought oh, crikey that's good um and just mainly i sit there think about what the like i, I, I think that the format of it where like i say devlin sets out a task or a you know, set of restrictions for the week helps a lot if it was just Right, each week make a level. I think I'd be kind of lost and I you know, spend ages trying to think of something. So I think by giving us a, a challenge each week, it kind of helps sort of focus the mind. Um, but more, yeah, more than anything, I just play around. It, it, it's, there's always that classic, you know, the, the sort of the fear of the blank canvas where you start a new level and it's like, right, there's nothing there. What, you know, where do I go? Um, but if you know, it's just start throwing things down and see what works. Um, I do see. Uh, I I started this like the contest by trying to draw out ideas on bits of paper and things like that. But I found very quickly that that took ages to then try and move back into the game. And you realise what you draw on a piece of paper doesn't really fit with what the game lets you do. And so, and kind of yeah, just let the creativity flow is the way I go now. Yeah, that's fair. What are your thoughts on Cat Mario and the car? <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> I don't know anyone that really likes the car. Um, I think it's interesting, and I and, and I kind of get, you know, the, let's try and broaden the mechanics of the game and like let people create sort of, you know, different, different types, types of levels. levels. But uh, the car is just so annoying to control. Um, so sorry, what what is the car? I'm like, I've not played Mario, Mario Maker at all, and have no idea what this is. It's just like a. So, I think it's like a car from one of the enemies in one of the in Mario it's 3D from world. Maybe? 3D world, yeah. So in so in in Mario Maker, you've got different themes, so you can kind of make a Mario one level or a Mario three level or a Mario world level. Yeah. And the new theme they added for Mario Maker two was 3D world. Um, right. And one of the objects that you can add to your level in in there is it is a it's called i think it's called the cooper car um but basically yeah it's just a little it's like a little go-kart um that i think as soon as you get in it it just starts driving and it will keep driving in whichever direction you're facing um you can do a jump in it but it's kind of the the sort of momentum of it is quite hard to control and it takes ages to change direction and right it's I think if you're really good, you can make actually fun levels with it. But I think that it's very hard to make something that isn't just annoying with the car. And if you bank, kind of, if you hit a, an obstacle too many times, or you crash into a, it, the car explodes. Um, and it's it's just too fiddly for me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I was going to see. Yeah, I'm quite happy thus far that uh, the competition has not had a make a car level week because I think I would just forfeit that week. <laughs> I can't wait for it to be next week's challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think Luckily, Devlin would do it to himself. He can't stand the car. No, he doesn't like it. <laughs> I've just googled it um, and I, I must say like, I've never played 3D World either because I'm really far behind in my Mario's but it looks a bit over designed and rubbishy 3d yeah. world it's... is really good it's just the car like the 3d world the 3d world tile set isn't as good as what 3d world was oh yeah no no comment but on 3D world um at all, like I've never played a bad Mario um game. that gate that car just seems off to me you know good yeah. idea in principle i think maybe they should have tweaked the the the, the way it works a little differently maybe mm. maybe like you hold a trigger to go or something yeah. And hold that the different trigger to slow down. <laughs> then again, you are think... you you are analog I mean, or digital. You haven't got the mm. what's it called? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean when it comes to the triggers. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, but the um, I think the problem is it's too it's too different a mechanic from the, everything else is some variation on 
Mario's normal move set. You know, or you, know, you might put one of the um, get one of the power ups, and it might change a little bit about the way he jumps or the way. But it's generally you know, it's still you're moving Mario around and you're jumping and you're you know, building your challenge around those limitations. But the card, I think, you know, you've had 25 years of people playing. Well, I don't know what the, is it thirtieth anniversary? What I don't know what anniversary. Seven, I think, since Mario. Something is yeah. something ridiculous. Yeah, so you've had that many years of people understanding what makes a good Mario level, and you've had no no years of people thinking, well, how the hell do I make a good level with this car? So I think I just think very few people have worked out fun things to do with it. And yeah. I've no doubt there are fun things you can do with it, but it's just there's. There's not that many levels for it. Well, yeah, that's a fair point. How does it stand up with like almost 40 years worth of, of people's knowledge on how to create, you know, the perfect platform level yeah. in a Mario style? That that's yeah. a good point. So yeah, it's not. I don't think it's anyone's favourite addition to the game. Um, Certainly not mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, is I, I remember playing um, Mario Brothers after playing like Super Mario Brothers, going back and playing that. I was playing Mario Maker, and I was like, the physics are completely different in, yeah. in the old game. The, I I was watching uh, AGDQ uh, one year. It was either AGDQ or SGDQ, and they were doing uh, runs of Mario Maker. It was like races. It was. And they said there's no Super Mario Brothers three levels because the physics are based on new Super Mario Brothers. The physics in Super Mario Brothers mm. three on this game are crap, whereas in Super Mario Brothers three really? the physics were amazing. In this version of Super Mario Brothers three, the crap. <laughs> That's a shame. I think it's not. It's not. They're not crap. crap. It's just it's the, not it, as good as they're the other ones. Like, yeah, they're, they're different, not aren't right. they? So, oh, yeah. yeah. Again, because yeah, like I said, the, the, the first week of this the, the competition, I did a, um, I went on the Mario one theme. And because the, yeah, the whole point was, well, try and make a level feel like it was actually from that game. So I thought, oh, I'll go back and play Mario Brothers 1. And yeah, once you've, you, you've been playing Mario Maker and you've got used to the the physics on that and the way Mario jumps and kind of how much it's you know, a lot he easier keeps. to handle in yeah. the games. <laughs> if you go back and you think, how the hell did anyone ever play this on the you know the original NES game? It's like, it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it's just whatever you're used to, isn't it? So. Mm -hmm. I can still I can still go back and play. I don't know if it's because I don't I haven't played so many of the modern Mario games, but I can still go back to Mario One and Mario Three, and play them and really enjoy them and not not kind of think about the physics. But I guess I would have the same problem going on to Mario Maker now. Yeah, kind of I think it just all over it just place. takes a bit of adjustment. It yeah. doesn't. Yeah, well, once you understand it, you can kind of flick between the two. Yeah, without too much trouble. But yeah, it's just that initial. Oh, I don't have that level of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is there any other games you guys would like to talk about at all in general that you've played? Something that, I don't know, maybe you've played that really stands out that you've, or, you know, that you've gone back to that you wish you hadn't skipped? Anything like that? I'll tell you what I've, I've gone back to quite recently um, that I completely, it completely passed me by when it first came out and when I got it the second time as well. Um, the Orange Box. All right. Um, so, like, I've, yeah, I've, I've, I played Half Life Two briefly in 2004. You know, good game. Got about two thirds of the way through, and then, and then quit it. Got the orange box. Only played Portal, and then got it again a couple of years ago, and finally went through the whole thing last month. Um, and it's incredible. It's, it still holds up really, really well. Um, mm. I, I got. Like, I, I actually played right through at the end of Episode Two as well. So. When I finally get VR, I'll be ready for for Alex. But yeah, so really, why really why why is it taking you so long to get around to playing through the Half Life Two games? Like, I, honestly, or... I don't know. I think they came out like the Orange Box came out right at the point where I legally became allowed to drink. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, the, the, the kind of next t sort of 10 12 years, I really like I, I was very patchy with gaming, um, for a long time, so I'm only now going back and finding almost 10 10 12 years worth of stuff that has is, that is just completely passed me by. It turned out that he's actually finished the game 12 times, he was just under the influence <laughs> each time, yeah, just absolutely out of it. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> but yeah, it, it really is, it's, it's just kind of 
that that combination of having been a student for a decade, not having had money to to buy games, and then when I have had money, basically drinking it away. Um, <laughs> Like, it's, it's only now that I'm kind of coming back to stuff like this and, and Half-Life 2 and, and episode 1 and episode 2 are, are genuinely incredible Yeah. Um, really really strong good storytelling good physics everything about it just yeah loved it absolutely loved it it does it, it holds up so well because when you think that even so I, I was going to say actually I because again on the forum we had not long ago someone did, you know, did the kind of sort of semi-annual post your top 20 games of all time list. <laughs> um and i put i think i put half-life and half-life 2 uh, but you know lo- lots of people put half-life games in there so i thought oh, do you know what it's, it's been a hell of a long time since i've played these games so i went back kind of in the last couple of weeks and i've been playing through um starting right back from half-life 1 um and sort of playing back through the, the, the whole series i'm kind of only up to sort of like halfway through half-life 2 now but yeah. kind of it's enough to remind you just yeah well these games are pretty old now like half-life 2 was 2004 2004 the, yeah yeah so you, yeah that's a long time ago now and you think kind of what else came out at the same time yeah i Can think we pretend it was 2020 or something <laughs> so i don't feel like i'm really old <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um because i think like things uh doom 3 i think came out yeah. the same year and Halo it just, 2 would have been about that time as well yeah so. it, it, and just stuff, a lot of things do not hold up anywhere near as well. Because it, it, it was yeah, only three very last... different FPSs that you mentioned there, don't they? You've got Halo yeah, yeah. 2, which is like run and gunish. You've got Doom 3, which is more horror compared to previous Dooms. And then you've got Half Life 2, which is very physics based and also mm. very narrative driven. And it's a it lot is, more yeah. slow, slow, uh, slow pace, I would say. It's not, it is definitely slow pace. It... Yeah. It is in a good way, I like think, not like it's drags. It's like it, it yeah, it takes like a while very, the, to do. Not takes a while then. It's you know, it, it's um, it, a game that it does take a little while to get going, which is kind of one of the things. I mean, everyone everyone talks about oh, the first Half Life. Oh, you got to sit on a train all the way at the start. Um, which at the time people were like, oh, this is amazing, and now looking back, people are like, well, we, it was good at the time, but now it's like, why am I just sat on a train for five minutes? Which it's not actually that long, but but yeah. it, the thing that struck me with going back and playing through the start of two just last week is it takes a long time to get going, and it's doing really you know heavy lifting in terms of setting the scene, and you get you know, you're kind of sent into uh, uh, City Seventeen on kind of on the train, and there's a lot of narrative being established and you've got um what's it like dr breen doing his breen casts and sort of telling you about the world and kind of what's changed since you know gordon freeman's been frozen in time or whatever's happened to him um but it's an awful long time before you get a gun it's a long time before you have much to do other than yeah, I, I, I thought it was quite around. Yeah. i thought it was fairly quick i thought you got off the train you picked up a can and put in the bed or threw it at a guard and then you walked off. Something happened in another room, maybe. You then leave that room. You've got and to get like Barney has then. to take you to one side and talk about. I think you it's know, as long as you. It's as long as you make it really. But it, it, it is. Can yeah. Last about it can last about half an hour, I think, easily. Yeah. Because um, you have to for, you, you... for a shooting game. That that's a long time before it really kicks off. Yeah. But it's all. It, I, I guess it's it's kind of well. Is it doing good, useful stuff in that time? And, and it Definitely. is. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, it's, I, I think the thing that stuck out to me going through it is just how built around sort of set pieces the whole thing is, and kind of they, it's not it's not heavily scripted, but it is. It's very well designed encounters that sort of like it funnels you into, like you know here here there will be kind of like a street level battle between you know gordon plus some other guys and the combine it's like yeah you can tell how they've very heavily play tested the area and it's like well here will be you know a, a car that you can duck behind and you've got you know, the whole point is you're supposed to be making your way forwards to take out you know some like a combine um like mounted gun sort of thing. it's it's you can tell that a heck of a lot of time has gone into right how do we make this fun feel like you're kind of directing it as the player but also you, like behind the scenes that you know the designer is getting you to do what 
they wanted you to do yeah and and things like you know you think you've got the the whole stretch where you're on the river and like kind of it's all building up to the set piece where you kind of take on the helicopter um and it's just and, and you know things like the the this section where you're on the the underside of the bridge um and it, it's just kind of like you think about the game and you think about well it's just the a lot of these really well constructed set pieces that are that are like you know it's like an action movie and it's it's just so well done um but yeah, yeah. in my head it was it, it it wasn't quite so um kind of based around those points it was more, it was more just about the whole thing but it, it's it, it is uh, it's the pacing of it that i think that sort of still holds up so well um it's kind of like organically scripted you might say mm. it, it feels it feels very organic when you're playing through it the first time and i think it's only when you go back to it you can see things that are happening as you see you're kind of being funneled into things there's a bit right at the start where you kind of you're in an attic and you go down the stairs and, and, and the game kind of funnels you into going, going towards the door turning mm. back around and trying to get back up the stairs but they break and at the time when i played that in 2004 it ruined me <laughs> um, but go, like because I was like, oh my god, that's incredible! The, the, you know the storytelling here, and so on. Going back to it now, it, it, I think you're right. It kind of feels a bit scripted, but you know, it, it's still, it still I think holds up really, really well. Mm. Yeah, because I think what was another FPS that I played fairly recently because it was on um, Game Pass was uh, it's a couple of years old now. Wolfenstein Two, or right. I, I can't remember which is the new Colossus. I think the second so, one isn't it. I, I recently played through the New Order actually. So okay, yeah, that, yeah. that's an interesting one. Yeah, because I was, the thing I was going to say about is, is, and I think it was the same in the New, new Order. Is that it's a very good game. There's a lot of again good sort of like high high action set pieces in it. But boy, did I spend a hell of a lot of time not knowing where I was supposed to go in Wolfenstein, and it's like it's it's a it's a really linear game. But there's a lot of sections where you're I, I don't know which door I'm supposed to go through. I don't. Where yeah. is my next objective? Whereas in ha like Half Life Two, yes, yeah, I've I've played it before and I know what I'm doing. But it's really well designed in terms of you know what you're supposed to be doing next and kind of like environmental cues to sort of lead you in the right direction and things like that. Well, that's a bit of a shame because the, the first the first of the new Wolfenstein games is actually pretty tight. Hmm. Um, but you you, you kind of know what you're doing. You know where you're going. It's fairly well scripted in that sense it's it, like, I've, I've heard a couple of bad things about the new colossus in the sense that you know it, it's a bit more it's a bit more open it's a bit mm. worse there's like the design's a little bit worse the story's a little bit mental um, it is it is a bit more mental uh, I, I mean I, like my ov overall kind of view on it is i've really enjoyed it it was a really yeah. good game um but yeah just, it, there was just a few too many points where i'm I'm running around and I don't know where I'm supposed to be going and it doesn't feel like this the, it's not a fun find the objective right. stage um, it, uh, I'm getting a bit annoyed now <laughs> I've played uh, the new order and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it I haven't played the whatever Colossus I've heard the it new, is new Colossus yeah. yeah that's the one I've heard it's not as good but I haven't heard that much negative about it other than that yeah. what I have heard is the spin-off one where it's like is it's the two oh, girls young blood. The, oh, yeah, young blood. Uh, yeah, i've heard about young blood and i heard that that is in awful <laughs> I, like, I was, I was really watching grindy. a consulvania episode the other day and they were talking about it and ryan was on this just saying it's, it's he's talking about it, it's just it's just like fucking shit <laughs> this is I it's like shit. Quite well i, I think it's it, okay I, I think, think his words were, oh, it's, it's, well it's got, you know, it's, it's, it's like, oh, uh, he, he basically was saying, like, you know, it's, it's a bad game and uh, the dialogue is crap, but oh, the mental, <laughs> all sarky kind of thing. Like, it's just, <laughs> yeah. I fucking love console it's media. Oh, yeah. Shame, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a shame it's kind of gone downhill because okay, I love the set and the kind of alt history. Mm. And, like, obviously, I'm. A kind of stickler for American history. It's what I, it's what I do as a profession. Mm. But like, it, it would have been great to see the new Colossus done right and with a storyline that didn't involve what I've read about, which is like cyborgs and and all sorts of weird I don't weird know. stuff. Uh, it's, it's I, I, I think I, it kind I of makes think... sense in a way where yeah, in a way that it progresses so much because Wolfenstein is set like 
at the very beginning of Wolfenstein is set in World War Two of the, yeah. the, the yeah. first of the re the re done series. Yeah, we'll go with that. The first one of the <laughs> new games yeah. is set in World War Two, and they have like these big fucking mechanical shit. So I think in yeah, like forty or so years, I think. You I know, think it's the sixties. In the plausible, yeah, this is kind of early sixties, isn't it? Is it? It's I thought it was later. 15, again. Fifteen years down the line. Yeah. Oh, right. I think so. Then Young Blood is like I think Young Blood's supposed to be in the eighties. Young Blood like is right. the eighties, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So there is this time for the. I. I. I mean, I've. I've read a lot of things. People saying, "Oh, they didn't like the way the story evolved in New Colossus," but I must admit, I really enjoyed the the story elements of it and for the most part the gameplay is still really good the, you know the, the the way the guns feel and kind of um yeah the way it set sets things up and they're sort of different it's it's not really a, it, there's kind of sort of puzzle almost puzzle elements to the to the way the combat works in terms of you know it, it's very much like like in the new the sort of newer doom games where it's like well actually you need to make sure you're you know, you're always moving and you're picking up you know, you're picking the right gun to take down the right enemies and you're not just you can't stick with one gun and just wait for them to to run at you and yeah. you have to kind of keep moving the kind of uh, i think yeah there's very few things i didn't like about the second game and this definitely i i thought the story was really good but i know a lot of, yeah there is quite a lot of commentary out there about how people didn't enjoy the story side of it um, see i'm only going but i'm only going off the second hand things because I've, I've never mm. played the second one it would just be a shame if it's if it's tailed off because the first one like the story and it was so strong i think mm. it, it would be kind of hard to keep that that going so if you like it i, I think it's definitely i think i'm definitely gonna give it a shot at it's, some point. yeah i'd say if you enjoyed the first one there's no reason not to try the second one because it, it's yeah ve it's very similar it's not you know they've not completely reinvented it or anything but um yeah um, I, i'd say definitely give it a go i cool. plan on playing the second one myself but i want to play the add on the like dlc for the first game oh the old the old oh, the blood old, that's the one yeah, that's actually I, set I, in modern war 2 yeah i think yeah. i think someone yeah. i think when i was reading on the forum people were saying it's basically returned to castle wolfenstein and yeah. it's supposed Ooh, to be amazing but i don't know i'm a huge uh, fan of return to castle wolfenstein do you want yeah, the about, wolfenstein games are amazing do you want to surprise really about all that talking of half-life and half well half-life two season victor didn't say a word about it i think he's just sent a message um through on the forum he says i don't think you could hear me i've had to go oh, that's sorry <laughs> oh i would just check if he was there he was oh because well. yeah he's a huge half-life fan isn't he and he obviously i think he recently went through alex didn't he it so. would have been, yeah, yeah. good to hear um uh, we talked about alex, alex we talked about alex the other day actually the three me doom and yeah was it me doom and it the, was yeah or was it just me and I didn't I, listen because I knew Alex might come up. Because I, I, Alex I did saw definitely come up, but yeah, like I, I found that like the conversation didn't really. I wouldn't have say it would reveal anything spoilerific. Like you know, I think it was more. <laughs> sort of, the, the conversation was more about how enjoyable it was, how how he feels the game is in VR, and how he feels it would be without the VR. I believe he said that it would just not be the same game at mm. all without it. You need the VR. It's that kind yeah. of experience, right. like so. That kind they of do thing. Like to, they do like to kind of set games around new technology and, mm. and things like that, don't they? Because Half Life Two and Portal were both set around, like kind of focused on new things that they were doing with the gravity gun stuff and the the physics of the, the, the portal. Mm. Um, it, it seems to be the kind of thing they'll go back to the Half Life universe if there's one a story worth telling, and two if we can do something really cool with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Alex, but it's just a case of obviously saving up to <laughs> try and yeah, get God, all, the, yeah. all the VR kit that you need for it. Yeah, hundreds no, of I can agree with you with that. Gear. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking if you would like to talk a little bit of news. Yep. Uh, we have we have three things that I, I've got down here. If there's anything you would like to bring up yourselves, by all means do. I am not a I'm not a, like I, I'm not you know gonna say no because it's a <laughs> GR kid thing and everyone has they insane so <laughs> um basically i noticed that uh in the pms there was something called a sega game gear mini oh, same gear micro micro yeah yeah so micro. Game gear micro. so i had a look at it and it is absolutely 
Oh, the screen is not even <laughs> as big as the. It doesn't look as big to me as the Game Boy Micro. But it's I was not, reading no, about it's almost it. half the size. I was reading I mean, about to be it. Fair, it fits the name, but. <laughs> there's this... four editions of it. So there's, uh, I think it's a red, a green, a black, um, and yellow, a thing. yellow um, one. Yeah, yellow. And each one has a different set of four games. So to have them all, you need to buy all four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I believe they were fifty. I think someone said they're about. They, they estimated at fifty quid. Fifty quid. I'm sure I saw that in yeah, on GRK, I but I don't know if that's confirmed or anything. But could you imagine buying those for two hundred quid? Uh, I would. I'd want a blowjob of fucking the head of Sega of each one I buy. To be honest. <laughs> I love the I love the, the the retro mini stuff. Like I've got a I've got a mini SNES. I've got a mini game a Mega Drive. I've got a mini uh, PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, this I'm the same. Hard. I've got I've got the same. I've got exactly the same. But I've got a NES and a Famicom as well. Uh, see, I've <laughs> never been able to get that. I've never been able to justify the forty odd quid for a NES. Um, but I will eventually because I'm. I'm <laughs> Um, very much a completionist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the Commodore 64 one as well, but I just, like, it, yeah, yeah, I can't even really find nice. it. Um, there's a Neo Geo one and a Capcom thing as well, like the Capcom yeah. ones in the shape the, yeah, of the a, arcade. A Capcom logo yeah. and arcade. Yeah. It's expensive on it's a couple it's yeah. like two hundred quid yeah. and but and this, I think the the new one that's coming out is Turbo probably... Graphics is coming out soon <laughs> as well, isn't it? No, yeah. It's four games and you need to buy four of them to get all sixteen games. Good God. Yeah. I'm and, not even sure uh, that the Game Gear has 16 good games on it. In all honesty, yeah, and it does. <laughs> is, it's got, is, is there it's got Space Harrier. It's got six, Space Harrier. Retro good feeling towards the Game Gear. Yeah, I, I, love my game I, gear. I think it, I think it would be more. Uh, I know it sounds daft, but I think the Game Gear would have more fans in America than in the UK because I know Sega yeah. dominated more in the UK and Europe. The home consoles but i think handheld nintendo did and the master system i believe was very rare in america right. whereas the game gear was a lot more common than right. the master system so for me i would enjoy a lot of master system games which are also available on the game gear so in america mm. they may enjoy a few master system games without knowing it simply because they played the game gear version of it <laughs> yeah see I, like, I've, if I've that never, makes sense i've never even seen a game gear Oh, I used um, to have I've, a never, game, yeah. I've never known anyone who had one. Fucking just, it just huge. Was not <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was huge. It was like, it was, like, it was batteries or something. It was a beast. Oh, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was almost the size of an it Xbox felt... One, an original it one. <laughs> it was probably, I'd say, like if you think about the Switch, it was probably the same width, width. as a Switch, but about oh, two and a half really? times the thickness. It was really chunky. Yeah. So is that a Game Gear in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. Is that a Game Gear in your pocket or a brick? <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I think everyone forgets the original. The original Game Boy was pretty chunky as well. It was, like, it was, it was but it wasn't no, as big as a Game Gear. No, 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 no. It was definitely smaller. But then you know, the Game Gear was full color and the backlight it was. and it was had two hours of battery life. <laughs> two, two hours. Two hours? Fucking what batteries did you have? <laughs> <laughs> I on, I'd be on. like if I go I had to have my plugged in I think if I walked off I'd be like right I'm off upstairs to play my game gear put it on battery's dead by the time you get <laughs> off the stage can I have the plug <laughs> yeah to well, be did fair, it come I, with the plug at least yeah it I, did yeah. it did right. yeah yeah, yeah that was like, I almost exclusively played mine plugged in yeah which kind I of mean, defeated yeah. the purpose but makes sense but uh, yeah the, you, you're right enough it kind of completely defeats the object but <laughs> But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little disappointing. Like I would like to have Master System Mini um, mm. instead of a Game Gear Micro because it's similar games. It, hopefully, they would put the actual Master System versions on, and not the Game Gear versions, because they yeah. are slightly different because of the obviously the screen um, dimensions were different. Yeah. So, like in Sonic One, the first boss you could, in, on the Game Gear, you can just jump and hit uh, Robotnik constantly. Whereas oh, in, really? in the Master System version, you have to wait for him to start lowering, then you can hit them. Yeah. And in right. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the first boss is on a <laughs> um, higher angle, so yeah. it's a lot harder on the Game Gear than it is on the Master System, because it's I guess the screen... I've rarely got past that first boss in Sonic 2 on the Game Gear. 
because yeah, the the angles hard. It's a small screen. They also so it's, yeah, it's a, the boss is basically just dropping bombs at you. They just like bounce across the screen. Yeah. On the mass system, they always bounce in the same places at the same height, and so it's really easy. You just stand in one place and it misses you. In the Game Gear, they're like you never know how fast it's coming, where it's going to land, how high it's going to bounce. It's basically <laughs> impossible. Is it? It's impossible. Sure it's, it's, honestly, so, Robotnik should have just because if you if you remember Sonic the Hedgehog two on the Masters and stuff, Sonic mm. is about to fall into lava. Robotnik grabs him. Yeah, yeah. Up against the if he had just left him die, then we didn't. Then he would have taken yeah, over the world. He wouldn't. He won. It, he's but a, but just... no, he's such an egotistical bastard. He wants to do it himself, <laughs> even though he yeah. has a robot do it instead of hitting him with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he comes before Sonic puts you in the bomb. That's it. That's it. Uh, to, be honest, to be honest, I haven't really got much to say about this. It's disappointing. <laughs> There's not many games. Mm. Um, I, I genuinely was hoping that the, um, the the rumor about a Sega Microsoft collaboration yeah. would, would, would come to something because I think that could genuinely be a, a, an end for Microsoft in Japan, but also just like a really fruitful collaboration for the two of them. It would have been. This, is, this yeah. is not. This is the most underwhelming. <laughs> gaming news since i don't even know when it is it is a real letdown yeah i, I think it didn't help them that these yeah the rumors started talking about oh microsoft yeah that's I sega why, that, why that rumor came about anyway the microsoft S yeah. sega uh, like, in the nose branded dreamcast 2 branded xbox it, or something oh, that'd have been funny dreamcast though fan dreamcast 2 and everywhere else is the thing is people are going to be on the internet going, that's, that's not that's not a sega console you know just read the internet like you know it's, it's an xbox yeah. Blah 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 everywhere else. Yeah. Well, so, you know, people are not stupid. I think they probably, no. even if they were going to do it, they probably thought, what's the point? They're going to know within two seconds of the announcement that it's an actual X. Yeah. Yeah. So then, I guess. Fair enough, Pugs. The, yeah, that's what Pugs thinks. On the, the flip <laughs> side of that is, what, what are Microsoft going to lose by doing it? I mean, they sell, if you look at the, the sales figures for Japan, like there's, there's weeks where the Xbox one sells like a hundred units or something it's like well they can't do any worse by trying to team up with yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no there's no kind of worst case scenario for them anymore yeah. and the, the, the benefit is is that if they get a few sega exclusives out of it or, or timed exclusives then you know brilliant yeah they, they, they cannot lose out of that at all yeah and there's obviously it's some something of an existing relationship there because when the first xbox came out kind of you know there was a lot of Sega games came across early and a lot of kind of Dreamcast, you know, with things like Jet Set Radio, you got Jet Set Radio Future, yeah. um, and thing uh, like Panzer Dragoon, uh, they, yeah, that, that got a game. Somebody was the, uh, somebody was saying that on GR as well, actually, like it's a kind of really strong existing relationship. The, the, yeah. um, the Xbox Arcade, like the, the live arcade when it first started, um, had a really strong Sega mm. presence. Well, I, th I think they ended up releasing something like 40. 40 games from the sort of uh, Mega Drive Saturn Dreamcast era on it. Um, yeah. Virtua Fighter, Crazy Taxi came out on it, all the Sonics. Um, yeah, it was like, it, it, it would make sense for them to expand on that rather than whatever rubbish this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that that's the key thing. Is that uh, Not only is this a letdown in terms of what it actually is, it's a letdown compared to what it could have been. Yeah, I mean, there's. A, so I think Sega could have come out with anything else, and it would have been better yeah. than this <laughs> what if I micro thing. <laughs> yeah, Gunstar Heroes and three other games can be yours for just fifty pounds <laughs> or a fiver on any other console. Yeah, and it's not. It's yeah, it's the fact that it's only it's only four games. It's stupidly expensive, and actually, it's like okay, fine. If you love those four games, maybe that would make it worth it. But it's in such a rubbish form factor. It's like, well, I'm not. It's not as if I'm enjoying playing these four games on this stupidly tiny console. Yeah, the, the age group that they're going for are going to be kind of 35 to 40 year olds. Yeah. They're going to be able to see, they're going yeah. to be able to see <laughs> what they're it, doing. Yeah. Do you know what games they are, guys? Let me get my reading glasses out. <clears throat> on the uh, black... There's a couple of Sonic games, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. there is. Oh, yeah, on the black one, there not is... Not on the same one. Uh, the oh, so uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Puyo Puyo or Puyo Puyo 2, Outrun and Royal Stone. So Puyo on the blue, Puyo is bubble bobble, isn't it? No, Puyo Puyo is uh, Mean Bean Machine. Mean Bean, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. that's much better. Uh, on the blue one is Sonic <laughs> Chaos, Gunstar Heroes, 
why you'd want the Ma- uh, the the Game Gear version over the Mega Drive, I don't know. <laughs> uh, S- Sylvan Tail and Baku Baku Animal. Right. Yeah. Class. And then and then you have uh, um, on the red, Revelations the Demon Slayer. Ooh, that sounds fun. Megami Tensei Gaiden the uh, sorry Last Bible Special. Mm-hmm. The GG Shinobi. I don't know why they're saying good game, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Columns. Obviously, it's Game Gear Shinobi, but we'll just pretend columns? it's. Columns? Oh yeah. my god. And then on the yellow one, you have Shining Force Gaiden Ensai Jashin no Kunihi. <laughs> Flawless pronunciation. I is. know. Uh, then you have <laughs> Shining Force the Sword of Hajia. Right. Then Shining Force Gaiden uh, Final Conflict and Nazu Puyo Aruru Noru. Yeah, so you, you really need to be a Shining Force fan to be yeah. interested in that one. Yeah. Uh, I predict few sales. Uh, <laughs> I'm, totally assu- honest. I'm assuming there are there are only three Shining Force games on the Game Gear. Otherwise, it, <laughs> surely it makes sense for them to put all four in one pack. Yeah. You would think so. Yeah. I don't know what that fourth game is, but I'm look, I've got a picture of the like cover art, and it's just like some little anime characters with a chef's hat on, stood in front of like a giant cookie or something. <laughs> so who knows what that game's about? Could be. I um, quite enjoyed them. Um, or is it? A, uh, no, it's it's a it's some kind of cooking game. I don't know. Is that like a like some kind of beef dish? Maybe. Oh God, no. cooking <laughs> games are cooking games are. Uh, I've played Overcooked very briefly and I quite enjoyed that but Overcooked is amazing cooking games are not my thing Overcooked is amazing <laughs> I've put in, you know, in, in between Overcooked and Overcooked 2 I've probably played about 120 hours of them really? Yeah. I, I played it for Fucking 2 hours and I think if I weren't shit at it I would really enjoy it unfortunately I was really really poor um, oh, there's, there's so much fun I just kind of rage quitting after a little while you got to play with someone. Can't play on your own. Oh no, I was just playing with my friend. He's he's living it up, destroying these burgers, and I'm just running about my kitchen while everything's like on fire or something. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> horrific. Um, uh, I saw in a in, in a PM <clears throat> while we were talking, I thought I saw something about a Sega Cloud something. Yeah. Have a look. So that that was the other part of the announcement. That they did. I, I I've not read the details on it, but it's something to do with using, using like turning arcades into a cloud offering, or like using the arcades to power some cloud. Thing. I'm not. Oh yeah, I'm not sure, but so I think it's a uh, you know, uh, article on, now with info. Um, really. Yes, Fog Gaming is the new scoop. Sega will use arcades in Japan as the technical backbone. CPUs and GPUs housing arcade machines are mentioned specifically. Ultra low latency is touted. Commercial idea is to use arcades outside business hours. Mm. So, right. I, I guess I it's, it's basically cloud gaming with they use. Yeah, it, 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 it's nothing that's going to affect us or anything. I wouldn't think. I mean, if it if it improves the profitability of arcades and, and makes them more viable as businesses, then I'm on mm. for it. But you know, I, I love I love an arcade, but yeah, at the moment it really doesn't mean too much outside of um, Japan. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, because it is sad that you know arcades aren't the force that they were. Oh and god, you, yeah. you know, there, there is something about you know playing an arcade game and you're sitting in a big cabinet and kind of you know it's 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 a proper you know it's like the sort of cinema equivalent of. Yeah, you know, the the game's experience. You know, you're going somewhere, and it's a it's a you know it's a real experience. So but you just don't get it anymore. A racing game is just like it, it, there's, there's no equal. Yeah. Um. And and the like the light gun experience that you can't get on a on a home console now. Yeah. Because they don't work on the TV. That's it. Um. I, I would I would do horrible horrible things for a for a new time crisis, mm-hmm. or a House of the Dead. Um, yeah, but yeah, like it's just, it's not viable now. And if, uh, if if there were a way to make that viable again, absolutely. Do you know um, what? Knock yourselves out. When I when I when I'm watching High School Girl, High High School Girl on Netflix, uh, it's an anime. I'm looking at that and thinking, damn, I wish arcades were like are around you. There isn't any <laughs> arcade. The, the arcade around you would be like when I was younger. It would be like a video rental store. 
I had uh, Turtles in the back and another game in the back, which I can't remember. I can only remember Turtles, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was your kids. Oh, and the Snooker Club. It had uh, Metal Slug. Yeah. Nice. The, Fucking there was hard one game. In St- the, the, there was one in St. Andrews, and it was like a caravan, and then a pub, and, and tacked onto the pub was like a children's arcade room. Um... And, and, and it sounds really seedy, but it was absolutely monumental. I had The Simpsons, I had Crazy Taxi. It was my childhood in one room. Mm. <laughs> so I think everyone's got kind of like memories of like great arcade experiences and games. And but yeah, it's just it, that's the problem is they are memories. They're, they're things that happened a long yeah. time ago. Well, they never happen again. I remember like one one summer holiday we went on as kids like to we went to this place in West Wales. And the only thing I can really remember about the holiday, well, it's two things. We stayed in a caravan and it rained the whole time. Yeah. Other than that, was going to this one pub where they had like a um, bubble bubble arcade machine. And like me and my two brothers just spent pretty much the entire holiday playing on that. Um, yeah, that's and it was it. it was amazing. And then I kind of came home and I think we had a like a Spectrum at the time was our like home gaming. And we got bubble bubble on that, and you're like, it's that classic. Oh, it's not, it's not arcade yeah, authenticness. It's not, not quite the same. <laughs> it's fun, but it's not the same. Yeah. The, the PlayStation really did for the arcades because the, like the, mm. the games that came out on that were absolutely arcade quality. Yeah. Because yeah, um, I think there, there was just that that period where what you could do in an arcade in terms of like you know the the hardware that was in there and it, it looked that much better and it sounded amazing it's like yeah. and then yeah come sort of like those that 32 bit generation slowly the uh, the advantage of the arcade was eroded it's still yeah, kind it's of like you... on for a little while after that like yeah yeah anyone's ever look... played f0 ax yeah um that is that is brilliant but mm. it just it never quite got back to it after 95 96 i don't think yeah yeah, it's bad when you think about it because there's some games that like, um, like Turtles, just the first arcade Turtles. It was then put on the NES, and the difference in quality of the games oh, it's is quite a big. Yeah. Like the the difference between like Turtles in Time and the SNES game again, it's it's still a big gap. Like, but compared to like the the NES version and that, you know, but it's just. And then obviously, you had the Saturn and PlayStation come out, and, and Sega games were closer again to their yeah. own arcade ver- uh, games and then yeah. you had uh, the Dreamcast which and like oh, now um, I went I went to Cornwall last year and they had that Mario Kart game there yeah. Yeah, when yeah, I was there and that. I was like oh it, 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 like you, you look at that and that like arcades would be like wow it's so much better than what I can, I can have in the house and you look and go oh it just looks like Mario Kart yeah yeah <laughs> The last one I played, like, like it, it was like it looked like Double Dash, mm. um, and, it, and it was like this is good, but yeah, like Mario Kart Eight is is on a completely different plane. Yeah, yeah, it's mad, which um, is a shame, really. The only other th- news I've got on here is Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. Uh, Sony, uh, they um, basically tweeted out that they have decided to postpone the PlayStation 5 events scheduled for tomorrow. It says June 4th, I'm saying tomorrow. Uh, While we understand gamers worldwide are excited to see PS5 games, we do not feel that now is the right time for celebration, but for now we want to stand back and allow more important voices to be heard. Uh, This was one of the tweets, um, uh, basically. Uh, Microsoft uh, said uh, something similar. Obviously, there are more tweets from each each company. We've got Microsoft doing the same kind of thing where they have tweeted. Um, Xbox stands together with our fans, creators, colleagues, friends, and the entire African American Black community against systematic uh, systematic racism and injustice. We are proud to join with Microsoft in amplifying Black and American, uh, Black and African American voices uh and then it's got like uh more tweets then about the same thing uh yeah they've even uh like uh play xbox has even um retweeted and like i said we stand together with the playstation tweet um so like you know it's quite surprising really considering they rival companies 
Uh, Nintendo have said uh, Nintendo sh shares the pain felt in the United States after the tragic death of George Floyd, and we stand with the black community and all those who recognize our shared humanity and fundamental belief in uh, equity uh, and justice. I'm not sure if that's meant to be equality and justice, but you know, we reject bias, exclusion, oppression, and the violence that led uh, leads to these completely unnecessary deaths we are committed to fostering uh, equity inclusion and diversity in all aspects of our business and the work we do uh, so you've got things like that it's the only thing i think of and the first question is i i, I know my view on this um do you think uh these companies should not be getting involved with uh what people are saying politics human rights politics i think is different myself um but you know uh, do you think they should not be getting involved and still be showing playstation 5 games tomorrow and saying you know to the people who just like the games and don't care about other people here you go use your games we don't care either or no, do you think, think they should be must, doing what they're doing they, they must get involved i don't i don't see that there's i don't see that there's an argument for them um keep it on going as they're going with everything that's going on at the moment well you, the thing is, is I would agree with you, but then you look at some of these fucking tweets, man, <laughs> and then you oh, have some people right. taking the piss, going, yeah. "No, we demand our play," and, and then you, you can see they genuinely take the piss, like, and then you can see there are some people like, "Dude, why are you getting involved in politics? We should be, you know, you can still carry on," and it's like, but it's the same. It's, the it's same kind not. Of people that say that. It's not like, really a political situation. I, I get like it, it, it can be construed that way. But this is a human rights thing. This is about like people yeah. being treated with fucking basic decency Dignity. and, and yeah, not basic, not yeah, not, basic not like, being killed, being by beaten and <laughs> killed yeah. by the people who's supposed to serve and protect. I think it's a lot, a lot, a much bigger issue than just a political agenda by some. You know? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same people that criticise sportsmen for putting it on their jerseys or, or, or football yeah. clubs for. You know, for, for tweeting their support, it's all West Brom and banned the guy um, from their stadium for, for, for basically saying that, you know, they'd, they'd lost his support um, for supporting the Black Lives Matter campaign, and it's it's a nonsense. Yeah. Um, the, thing that, the thing that got to me about the whole thing, um, I just read, I think it was Math, it put something up on in the US politics thread on GR, um, yeah. About it's the the, the magazine caught the, the website Kotaku hmm. had reached out to all the all the gaming companies who had, who had jumped yeah. on the Black Lives Matter hashtag mm -hmm. to offer to, to ask them you know what specifically they were doing to, to combat racism and to you know to, to to be more inclusive and nearly all of them have declined to comment. Mm. That's the thing that gets to me more than mm. anything else. Yeah, because I, I think it is. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of token messaging going yeah. on and it's like you know, there's that you know, on on it kind of been doing the rounds on twitter they sort of like blanket you know corporate you know, blank space for the corporation and then kind of just you know the thoughts and prayers style meaningless message that is pretty much to, an, to a certain extent what a lot of corporations have just been putting out it's like yeah you know, we, you know this is bad we feel bad about it we stand with the movement yeah yeah but, it's like, what, so, but, what, yeah, but what are you doing about it? yeah, yeah what, what? Exactly. and then so th and then you kind of get if you kind of go ultra cynical and you're like oh now but oh yeah ea have said they're going to give this amount of money and square enix have said they're going to give this much and it's like well yeah but are you are you doing that because it matters to you or are you doing that because you want to win the who's who's had the best response yeah. to this well, competition yeah, look, and it's like well does, does it really matter Dude, they're still giving money it's like well yeah it's, like, uh, it, I don't know about the the, the Kotaku uh, thing, but I was I noticed people saying that on Twitter. Like, in the, I was looking at the Nintendo one at the time, and uh, like people were putting like things up that Nintendo have been doing, and mm. showing that they like the, the message Rick seems to ring true mm, with right. like some of the other things they've already done. Well, fair um, enough. If been, if yeah, if exactly. Doing things then, uh, but obviously the, the thing is, is though, is really? is I don't know what. I don't know what they can say, if they, if you make sense, because if they do say something, people are going to be like, well, you're doing it because you want to make sales. You want to make your company look good. Well, yeah. If they don't say anything, you've got people saying, well, why aren't you saying anything? 
I think yeah. it's about. I, I it's wouldn't about know what. I personally wouldn't know what to do there as a company. As a person, it, it's, and, and my own. It's fine to say something. So, like, I, I think it's important to say something. But yeah, what they need to be saying is, this is wrong, and this is what we are going to do about it. Yeah. You know, maybe we can't influence the police. We can't influence what the police are going to be. Well, um, they are doing, doing something for, by in, in like, small, um, like in a corner of the world. Like I know this is it, it might not be perceived as a lot, but they are doing something in that they are like, this shit's happening. We are not going to mm. show this game stuff because there are more important things going on right now. They have stepped yeah. back to yeah. allow the 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 message then to not be hampered by other. Th- things that people might be interested in if that makes sense yeah, yeah. But which i think is, is that enough? enough but it, it is it's it's something start. but is it enough yeah it's a, exactly it's a start i think it's kind of all well, that's that's sort of the minimum you should expect of anyone really is that you recognize something is wrong and you acknowledge it which is kind of almost as far as lots of corporations yeah, yeah. yeah it's like well yeah it's, yeah but that that's kind of that's like the basic absolute minimum that's like walking past someone on the street who's dying and not just ignoring them, kind yeah. of maybe I or maybe I'll ring okay, the police. Man. But yeah, it's like you've got it's, it's you've got to do more than just acknowledge there's a problem. Yeah, um, but like, what, what are you going to do going forward? The thing is, yeah, though, is, is I've, I, I, while you, you, you use that analogy, I know of someone who did die, and people walk past him and just yeah. walk past yeah. him uh, because yeah. they just they just assumed that's he was drunk human, on the floor because he was known as a drink yeah. known as a drinker. Yeah. This was this is going back about well, until I was about eighteen. Uh, yeah. Or maybe younger, I think they they just uh, assumed he was drunk and just walked past, and it turned out he he died. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. which is just... horrible, horrible to hear about. It. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But, the, but the thing is, is is what what astounds me is this has been going on for fucking like centuries, like the, the racism and stuff. But there are black people in America being killed by cops quite often like i know it happens to other races i'm not disputing mm-hmm. that like like i'll see on twitter like black lives matter come up and then someone will say all lives matter and then you'll you'll see people say like we're not saying all lives matter but you're trying we you know this is a, a, a for a, a genuine cause and you're yeah. trying to like squash that with your yeah. bullshit like but um it's like th- this have happened quite a lot recently and there's been like protests and riot but this time for some reason, it seems to have struck a chord with everyone. Like, not everyone then, but it seems to be even on a grander scale. Like, people in other countries are also protesting. Which is, like, something I wouldn't have thought thought to have ha- needed to happen. Especially as, like, this stuff like this happened in, what, the 60s? In America? Yeah, there, and it's happening again now, 60 years that. later. Um there is actually precedent for that. I am. Re- I, I would need to actually go back and look at my notes to, to um, know exactly what happened. But I remember. I remember reading about race riots in Detroit um, in 1967, and there, mm-hmm. there were actually like sympathy strikes and sympathy marches in the UK for that as well. Um, I didn't so know it's, that. It's not, a, it's, it's not a new phenomenon, um, and it's frightening that we are 52, 53 years down the line from these things. And, st- and it's still happening, yeah. and we're That's, still seeing yeah. the same the same things going on and on. It's just um, the pressing side of it, isn't it? The, the, the lack of progress, and it's kind of, it's that, is it? I don't know whether it's naivety or whether it's just kind of a lack of, yeah. You know, when you, or whether it's maybe this is just me, but I, I certainly felt like in my life, kind of growing up, hearing a you know, you, you know you're in school and you're hearing about history and you're hearing about kind of yeah what happened in the 60s and civil rights movement and all the yeah. and and naively you know getting to like in my teens and thinking we're better you know, that was the past and we're, we're better than that now and then kind of you know the last <laughs> however many years have just made me think are we are we actually better than that now or it was it just are. kind of like a surface yeah. level it's it felt like things were getting better and then it was as if the internet came along and kind of shone a light on all these little yeah, like horrifying things that, that you thought had gone away but it actually just scurried away I, 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 I do think mm. we are better generally speaking like I even think like even people who have prejudices are not as prejudiced as they used to be maybe I, 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 it, it's hard to make sense like you know people who are gay would have been 
prosecuted and, and imprisoned mm. like say 30, yeah. uh, 30 40 years ago i think it was like so like we have improved as society but like i think it's we, such I a think it was, small it became, insignificant it became, amount it seems yeah i think it became harder to be openly you know, kind of uh, abusive yeah, about these things abusive. and kind of yeah like, yeah but i think the, the internet shut kind on of, my, yeah. yeah and and yeah the the anonymity of the internet doesn't help at all but also I, no. I just think kind of slowly but surely the the confidence has returned to the people holding these prejudices and they feel like yeah. now oh you know it, there's there's enough of a you know a critical mass of us out there now and we can start i, I think another thing uh, some of the stories some of the stories that came out after the lockdown sort of stuff came in just 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 kind of proved it for me um, like there were a bunch of Chinese and, and, and Asian people in Glasgow going around Glasgow got got beaten up. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, if, if we'd moved on, if we'd moved on that far, these things wouldn't be happening. Yeah. I watched Do the Right Thing the other day, um, and it, the, like, the, the plot of the, the plot of that film like, it came out in 1989. It could have been it could have been yesterday. It's, it's a, a cop well, kills a guy um, uh, like in the street over something over something pretty minor. And it's like, well, that is basically what's happened now, thirty-one years down the line. It's, mm. it's it's frightening. Yeah. Well, I think I think what happened this is the guy had his the the cop had his knee on the guy's neck and lungs at, at, at several points. Yeah. But I think over overall is like eight minutes or something, and yeah, basically that is exactly time. what killed him. It's ridiculous. But um, there's a, like there's a local Chinese around here. They have since this coronavirus stuff has happened, they have been open. And there's actually really? uh, like they got they've got a, a Facebook page, and we went on there to look when they'd be open because we thought oh, maybe it's going to be a temporary thing. And it was on there saying, um, you know, we're going to be closed for the foreseeable future. Uh, just to let everyone know, we haven't been back home, and I think they're from Hong Kong. But my thoughts right. there is is why do they even need to say that? Pe- like yeah. I, I can get it. Like maybe they, I think they do once a year, uh, not every year, but go to Hong Kong. But I, my my mentality is is are they are they letting people know because they they fucking scared of what might happen because you've heard I've heard of like these things happening to other other people and I'm like and like around this area there is not a lot of people who are f- like are not white yeah um right. like when I was in school I think there was maybe one or two black people uh, when I was leaving you like it's a very white area where I am mm. and like I yeah. you know. So it's at the same time I'm thinking are people around you that shit and people around you are that shit sometimes. So it's yeah. like it's 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 like you know they've been they've been living in this area. Well, I don't know if they live in this area, but that shop would be known since before I was born, I think. So so you know they they like just fucking leave them be. But I, yeah. I genuinely am I, I I I genuinely do think the reason why they put that on there. Is to to like I don't know maybe cover themselves from any dickheads, personally. Mm. Which is the, just why else would they, they wouldn't need to do it? Like yeah, you know, they would need to. It's like oh yeah, we're gonna be close for the seeable. We'll see when we get. But if we go look, we haven't been. You know, they shouldn't need to do that, just no. because they yeah. are of Chinese origin. Then because yeah, you know it, 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 it's so fucking more. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of fear yeah, that this well, part of the sort of crux of the whole thing is like because of the fact they are a, you know a minority ethnic community or you know they, they're not they're not white therefore they have to do they have to justify something which a white person wouldn't have to you know, it's it's just that yeah they shouldn't have to stick a message like that up because no one should be questioning or worried about that it's just it's it's this whole idea of you they you know you you have to protect yourself more you have to worry about things that uh, you know other other people don't need to worry about and it's just it's not the way it should be is it um no absolutely no i i like i go i go on i don't i don't use twitter a lot i i go on there mainly to use it for like checked out things to do with twitch and that kind of thing but i've been reading a lot of this stuff uh uh like occasionally i will delve into reading stuff uh like that's political and stuff and reading about about the, uh, um, this guy in America who was murdered, you know the the uh, I forgot his name, sorry. Um, but I was reading about it, and I, I didn't really read much. But I just saw it, and I thought, all oh, right, America have done her again, kind of thing. Mm. 
Mm. And then I was sitting here watching the news and it came on the news and I was, when I actually heard exactly what happened, I was genuinely gobsmacked. I, I, I couldn't believe that they've done that. <laughs> it does look like the guy has been at least, at least being charged for it, which is so the probably the, f- the George Floyd one, the charged the police officer who did it and they've now finally charged finally, the yeah. guys who were, um, uh, what, uh, who were on the scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of lo- lose track of the sort of timeline now, but it's, it was over a week ago now, wasn't it? I think, Last the, Monday, I think it was. Yeah, um, so it's like that is re- how how on earth can it take that long to to make these decisions? That yeah, that obviously yeah. It, I mean, it was three three days or something before the guy who actually killed him had yeah. kind of anything brought against him, and now and it, well the the other guys there it's taken over a week. It's like this is ridiculous. Yeah, and if you look at it, like there's video evidence you can see from that you can see from the cops' previous incident that there's you know there's malicious intent there. Mm. It, it, it's not rocket science. To, yeah, yeah it's, to get it's, the investigation fast track. I I don't understand. Like I I saw a picture as well um, on Twitter. Obviously, some things I don't know were true or not because you have to like there is stuff now fact checking things. But it showed a, a white. Uh, police officer in France doing the exact same thing to an, a, a black guy there, like three days after this all happened, mm-hmm. this this the, this started. So it, yeah. it's it's clear, like, like I, I've seen a lot of people saying, "Oh, it's not it's not so bad. It's it's a system a US thing. It's not so bad outside there. Like it's not like in the UK." But you've seen just how bad it is. Yeah. Everywhere well, I mean, you've in the seen, world. Yeah, with the, the lockdown, it, it gets kind of thrown, again, more light on some of this stuff. And, yeah, over here in the UK as well, where you've got kind of, yep, the, the, the lockdown in England got kind of brought down a few notches so people could go outside and they could, you know, meet socially distanced kind of one one other person or something. And yeah. you've got you know, lots of things on Twitter of people with videos of, you know, a couple, you know, a couple of black guys. They're, they're not breaking any rules. They're just kind of sat two meters away from each other talking to each other and the cops come up and yeah, it's you know, arrest right. someone it's like well yeah. why it's like you, you there is still there there's is also st- there's also on twitter like people saying oh i hope these people don't complain about a second wave where they show in the protest and then people mm-hmm. rightly point out what about the beaches what about this what about that? why are you using yeah. a <laughs> why are you using yeah. a protest for yeah, exactly. such a such a exactly. serious yeah, matter yeah Exactly. As your yeah. point so of like, all the things you could choose. Yeah, because uh, uh, you know, there's multiple kind of counterpoints to that stupid argument. It's like, A, actually, if you look at it, for the most part, these protests are going out of their way to sort of still maintain social distancing and try and do it in, right, you know, we know that things are harder at the moment, so we, get, we need to get out on the streets because this is something that matters, but we're still going to try and do it as best we can in the within the rules. And also, if there's a reason... To break the rules, this is a pretty good reason to break the yeah, rules. Yeah, if, if you're going to do it, do it for something, do it for a yeah. good cause. Do it for something that jolly. matters, like you know, instead of yeah. just fucking getting a tan. Exactly. You know, this is something yeah. that is obvious. That is clearly is 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 so obviously something that is fucking necessary for yeah. people to actually be able to live a normal life. Like I was reading something, and there's like people saying about how they never thought that they like how a, a black person would have to be taught how different it is for them to be confronted by the police compared to what a white person would be taught like and things yeah, like that it's, it's just it's un fucking yeah. real there's no words to describe it it's fucking disgusting it is yeah. like i'm a white guy and even i myself can see just how bad it is yeah you it's, know it's easy for us easy for, like bemoan it but like, the, the, the reality of it Absolutely. And um, the thing is, is a lot of it you don't like. Do, honestly, like uh, you don't notice a lot of it, and then like because like you don't notice it uh, a lot until something like mm. s- really obvious is shown, and then when people point out these little things, like uh, they point out on I think it was Huffington Huffington Post, I think it was. It was so an article. Is this a Seth Rogen thing. Yeah, the Seth Rogen yeah. and the um, yeah. That was, that was- John Boyega. Yeah, and, and the difference in the the, the, the very, board. very different uh, headlines. How yeah. one and it was is the same star. writer, wasn't it? Yeah, same, same writer. writer. Same day. Same yeah. day. It was like an hour and a half difference between them. And, yeah. and it just goes to show just like... Yeah. 
slight and they, changes, and it's like, it. why was not both like applaud? Why was both not amazing yeah. people for doing this thing? Why yeah. is it like the, the? I don't know. I just and you, you just I like a lot you, of these things you wouldn't really know. Like personally, I wouldn't have no, I wouldn't have noticed it because it's it's not really something that I've ever really experienced in the same way as uh, like mm -hmm. I've you know I've had issues in the past, but I've never dealt with racism or anything so it's not something that I, it's something i'm pretty blind i would be blind i'm blinded to them because I, it's not something i experience so when you, you pointed out you're like geez you know you do notice these things and it's like how do people keep getting away with doing it mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah the thing is as well like the the um the, the half thing to post is a pretty left white sort of liberal yeah paper as well so if they're doing it then everybody is truly yeah uh, because uh, well, when I was looking at that that story, kind of comparing those those headlines, and you think you sort of start to think about, well, what is the is there a motivation behind that, and is it is it the writer knows that he's kind of being effectively, you know, it's somewhat subtly, I guess, racist, and just the way he's framing these two stories, and is that intentional, which is obviously bad, or is it unintentional, which is is also is kind of like, does he even realise it, it might be complete? He's oblivious, and he hasn't realised. That, that that's the, the way that the two stories have been framed is different and that's almost kind of just as bad that if it's if you without even realizing it this kind of perpetuating this difference in in story um, well the if, if you believe if you believe his twitter feed um he didn't realize and he's 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 sort of put up a very apologetic mm -hmm. um tweets in space at the same that he agrees with the point that's been made he will be more mindful in the future and to anyone who's angry with these two headlines they, they are absolutely right to be angry so on the yeah. face of it at least he's, he's kind of yeah um, taking a bit of responsibility for doing that but it, it, it is part of a much wider yeah um much more systematic problem i think yeah yeah i i the the issue i uh, another issue the concern i have right now is for uh this this entire movement is like oh, this has basically happened bef like not that long ago in term realistically this happened about mm. 30 40 years ago 40 odd years ago this similar kind of uh these similar kind of protests and so on my well, my thought i think it would be earlier that. yeah well yeah. i'm on about yeah, like yeah. the, the yeah. this in the 60s where it was massive and yeah. even over here you were saying there was uh people who were like protesting as well my can my my thoughts are are we gonna see a change for a small period of time and then it's gonna go back well you would hope not um, like like it, 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 technically speaking it doesn't affect me i'm a white person i'm i have uh white privilege because i'm white i'm less affected by things that people of a minority race are uh just because of the colour of my skin. But as a human being, I would want everyone to have the equal yeah. opportunities, like the, the same chances in life, to be treated the same. And yeah. to see people being fucking brutally killed and um, just treated like absolute shit just because of the colour of their skin, it did make me fucking despair for our, yeah. for, for our, for our humanity. So my hope is... In forty odd years' time, we we'll look back at this and think, this was "Fuck me, point. this yeah. this changed the, yeah. the everything." I mean, I, yeah. You know? I think Instead there of are, us, there looking, I hope points. it's not going to be looking back going, "It's happening again. Nothing have changed." Yeah, I think progress is always slower than like not not to uh, to kind of be a, sort of apologizing for the future or the way but i think you have to take i mean well, i don't know maybe it's just me but the kind of the cynical view of it's always going to be slower than it should be there's always going to be subtle no, resistances I, I, or, I, agree, or but... But I think we are there has been progress kind of something yeah obviously you, know, you look at things with like sort of apartheid type situations and kind of uh you know sort of segregation doesn't happen in the same obvious way um it kind of so on the nose as it kind of you if you're you know this race you can't 
sit in this oh, okay. part of the bus and you can't you walk through this door and you can't use these like water fountains and you know, those, those kinds of things don't happen but there's still a whole undercurrent of yeah there's not you know it's not like there's not signs saying that anymore but there's still social reasons why different people feel they sh they can't do things even though you know by the letter of the law they are they have the same rights and kind of, so i think it, we you've just got to keep things moving with this the, with as much speed as you can but you, you, you've got to look at what's happening now and say surely this is going to nudge you know the, the needle has to move as a result of this we yeah. have to see some progress but yeah you, you, there's no way that in you know 20 30 40 years time there isn't there aren't going to be similar injustices still happening it's yeah. just you, you hope we're we're closer to where we should be um and i guess you know the, the it, it, it certainly makes me th like, you know, like you're saying, Peds, that you know, I'm a white guy, you know, <laughs> which kind of is, you know, I'm, I'm a white guy. I live in kind of the Western world. It kind of, you know, I've been given the the dream ticket by life. Really, it's kind of, it, it, I, I will never face the same level of adversity that so many other people will, just because you know, I'm a man, I'm white, I'm, I, I live where I live in the world. It, 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 what more advantage could I want? Um, you could but, be a Tory. You'd be even well, more there is, yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah, not quite got all the You'd be a massive knob, uh, and I wouldn't not let you on the podcast. <laughs> but <laughs> I've snuck my way in secretly. I am a massive knob. Um, but you, but you think, should I? What what more can I do? And I think it, you know, I'm, I'm not not being part of the problem is not good enough. You have to be part. You have. We all have to be doing something, something. to help yeah. the, yeah. the situation. Uh, and kind of, of it, yeah. is needed, I think. Yeah, you kind of. You I, I think that people, is the well, thing. I'm not, I'm not a racist, so I, yeah, it's fine. But well, yeah, but there's lots of people who are, and there's lots of problems in the world that should. What What's are the, you doing? What, what to is the saying? Uh, for evil to triumph, or a good man has to do nothing. Uh, do nothing. Yeah. Do nothing. So I think, yeah. like, every time you look the other way when someone telling a racist joke, every time mm -hmm. you've kind of accidentally or on purpose been less tolerant than you should be. Like these are the times we. The change um, behavior, isn't it? I think. I think another. Yeah. Th I, I genuinely think a lot needs to be done when children are younger, uh, education and stuff as well. Because yeah. if you think about it, yeah. like in the UK at least, we talk. We not talk about a lot of things like, like uh, about um, certain racial aspects. It's more about. Like history, from what I remember being in school, is more about how great the British Empire used to fucking be, and which is why I think we're in such a shit situation we're in now, because people won that, and we talk how great our country is yeah. and how great our country used to be, and there's no mm. and like while things are talked about other things like diff yeah. different aspects. Of I mean, I think countries it's more... not very well detailed. It's just no, it's not. I think we're we're more outward facing than some countries are. You oh, yeah, you don't like the US curriculum i imagine is almost entirely focused on u.s internal affairs um, i think it varies state to state but it's yeah it's, that's it's true. Very, uh, very, in america they have and, um and very much gimps over i think a lot of a yeah. lot of things that they shouldn't is be. is it is it in america they have black history month you would think that even now is it is it black history month like yeah. you would think yeah, even that yeah, one was. month would educate Daniel people Jackson enough for like, like that. Yeah, um, you know? like a, a very famous black actor kind of said, "Well, I don't say that black because it shouldn't just be condensed to a month." No, yeah. it shouldn't be. I agree. I'm just saying. My my point was is though, is if they are educating people, even even if it's only slight and condensed into a month, then people should, you would think, have a better knowledge and understanding yeah. of of things. I mean, you yeah, know? I think that makes a, 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 awareness and understanding is a huge aspect of it. I think a lot of people just don't realize how bad things are or kind of aren't aware of kind of actually you know this isn't a problem I, I do somewhere think else. It's a problem here and I do think where you're on the outside uh like we like as we as us three are mm -hmm. white we're on the outside, so I think we don't yeah. notice it as much as someone who is going to be black, or yeah. Asian, or um, whatever race they are. It's, it's as simple as yeah. You, yeah. You, you you kind of, you're not like intentionally ignoring these things, you just 
may not pick up on them or, or the subtleties mm. of certain things simply because you are unaware of certain things. And I think that's going to, yeah. like, like, I'm in my 30s. So, like, there's a lot of things that I probably wouldn't know that someone who would be, like, 20 would realize simply because they've been educated more and things have progressed more even in that short amount of time, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I've, yeah? just, I've just seen that it's five past 11. I'm going to need to go in a second okay. or so. Uh, anyway, um, I, we'll, we'll end a year then. Uh, I'm just hoping <laughs> that um, hopefully everything that's being done um, just ends up making everyone's lives better. Except for yeah. Trump, he's a prick. We can all yeah. get behind that. I think so. <laughs> yeah, hopefully every, uh, it, it does uh, actually uh, amount to something significant at the very least. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So there you go. Uh, but if you can, guys, uh, if you're able to, and you're there's there's on Twitter, there is p- petitions and loads of stuff to sign. Uh, if you truly do care about your fellow human beings, and you would like to see uh, people actually have uh, decent lives and decent rights, please sign them. Absolutely. Do something to help. Yeah. And that's that's as much as I can say, you know. I think yeah, it's to to, to do something is the key, isn't it? It's don't. Yeah, don't don't just sit on your ass. Get outside. Actually, (laughs) actually start working. Yeah. Right on that. um, Rather, I don't even know what kind of note that is. (laughs) (laughs) Let's say somber. On that somber, somber, we'll go with the somber. Yeah, on that somber note, we're going to end the uh, the Twitch cast or. It, uh, we will say thank you to Victor. Rock hard, hard. That didn't sound like anybody <laughs> do. Uh, also, uh, Cora. Thank you. And Bye Jenny. <laughs> yep, cheers. Uh, we are going to raid Cheeky Devlin if he's still alive. He was just now. I'll show double check. He is currently playing Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, which is Super Mario Brothers 2 Japan. Uh, I was have- just going to say. Did you, whether you said he's still live or still alive then. no st- still alive still alive <laughs> alive right uh thank you for anyone who have listened thank you for anyone who w- will listen in the future uh we will see you soon bye-bye see ya bye guys <laughs>